What is going on YouTube? Gab is here and recently I've come to the conclusion that there is no really streamlined way for making content, for producing content on Linux right now. And while I do know many other content creators that use Linux for their, their well, content creation, I know that the set of tools and the configurations that they use are very different from mine, mostly because they have different needs. But the real problem here is that if you're new to the content creation world in Linux, you probably don't even know where to start. And if you try to explore the solutions that are available on your own, you're probably going to face many challenges and most likely it won't be easy to overcome them. And for these reasons, today I want to show you my very own content creation setup on Linux and the tools that I use in the process of making one of my videos from the very beginning to the end. So with no further ado guys, let's check it out. The first stage of making one of my videos is obviously recording. To record video, I use my Panasonic Lumix G80. I record at 4K 30fps using the standard H.264 codec. Before getting into the software I use, I want to spend a couple of words on my Linux distribution of choice, Arch Linux. Personally, I find that for content production, Arch and Arch-based distros such as Antergos or Manjaro make the most sense mostly because of the fact that packages are as up-to-date as they get. This is very important for content creators in my opinion, since most more recent and powerful hardware needed for the job benefits a lot from using the latest kernel and having the most recent versions of some packages like FFmpeg, Melt, as well as the actual programs I'm going to talk about soon, usually brings all the performance improvements, bug fixes and new features to you without any effort. To record audio at my desk, as well as for tweaking and editing it, I use Audacity. It's a rather simple piece of software, but it's got all of the features I need. The features I use the most are the noise reduction feature, normalization and amplification. One other very important piece of software that I use to capture my video is OBS. OBS is a complete open source solution for streaming and recording. It allows me to do screen records as well as my live streams using my webcam and mixing different audio and video sources and even adding some effects here and there. From time to time I need to do some image editing and for that I use either GIMP or Inkscape. I use GIMP for all of my video thumbnails and for some video overlays from time to time. Most of my time in GIMP is spent playing around with colors, effects, well mostly blur, gradients and layer compositing. GIMP is a very powerful tool and allows me to create some nice images without much effort. I use the latest release of GIMP version 2.10, installed from Arch Repos. If the version that comes in your distribution is older, I strongly suggest you to install GIMP using Flatpak instead. You will find a link to the Flatpak page in the description. When I do my own designs, if I'm creating a logo or a graphic for the channel, I usually use Inkscape. The advantage of using Inkscape is working with vector graphics. You see, vectors are easier to manipulate than rasters and the set of tools that Inkscape offers is just perfect for designing logos, icons and simple graphic compositions. Now, for actual video editing, my program of choice is KDN Live, with some tweaks. KDN Live is a very complex software with many moving parts and libraries that depend on other libraries and so on. If you install it from your distribution package manager, chances are that you're going to see a lot of errors and crashes. For this very reason, my KDN Live setup is a bit odd. First of all, I use the app image version provided by the KDN Live developers themselves. I will leave the link to the download page in the description. 
The app image version is a standalone all-in-one file that contains KDN Live along with all of its main dependencies. One of the features that KDN Live doesn't have by default is GPU rendering. Since I started doing 4K videos, this feature got indispensable. Rendering a 4K video on the CPU alone takes about a full day, but using the GPU it gets down to between 30 and 90 minutes. To be able to use GPU rendering, you'd need to compile FFmpeg with some special flags. Fortunately, there's another project that uses both FFmpeg and Melt and has GPU rendering enabled by default. And that's Shotcut. Shotcut is basically another non-linear video editor like KDN Live and it uses the very same libraries. What I like to do is downloading the latest version of Shotcut and pointing KDN Live environment to the one Shotcut uses. I was initially skeptical about the solution, thinking that it would be unstable or unpredictable, but on the contrary, it proved to be more stable than I could ever imagine. Now that the right libraries are in place, we need a rendering profile that actually uses the GPU. I have a couple of them for my NVIDIA GPU, I will put them in the description, and these profiles are H.264 and H.265 respectively, and they provide a very good video quality. The only downside is that the file size is huge due to how to the GPU encoder works, but that doesn't have to be a problem. I usually transcode the first output video from the command line using FFmpeg and that's still very fast and manages to reduce file size significantly. There's also a weird quirk with these profiles in KDN Live and that's that every time you open it up they show a warning and prevent you from using them. It's very simple to bypass it though. Uh, just select it, press edit, don't touch anything and press OK. Now the warning is gone and you can use them. One other important feature to enable in KDN Live is proxy clips. If you're working with 1080p or 4K footage, playback can get slow to the point of being unusable. Proxy clips are basically transcodes of the source videos to a lower quality. They will be used for timeline playback only and will make it more than suitable for editing. As for how I actually use KDN Live, my editing workflow is decently simple. I do some color grading, a few cuts here and there, and some simple compositing and dissolvance transitions. If I need to do some more serious compositing, I usually resort to Natron. Natron is a node-based compositing tool, and while it's far from being easy to use, it's indeed very powerful and allowed me to create some very nice animations. Personally, I cannot say that I can use Natron that well. In fact, as I said, it's a very complex piece of software, but following some tutorials online and referring to the guides on the Natron website is more than enough to be able to create some nice compositing animations. Finally, the music I use in my videos, most of it comes from the YouTube audio library. Recently, YouTube has been adding more clips and more songs to it, and I think it's a great resource if you're making YouTube videos or any other kind of content and you're worried about music licensing. A couple of tips, uh, I usually try to find some upbeat music for the intro part and for the cinematic opening after the intro. As for the rest of the video, sometimes I don't use music on it, uh, it really depends on how I feel about the video itself, but some other times I try to find some background music that doesn't interfere with me talking or with the content you're watching. It doesn't have to be distracting, it just has to be a background. So guys, I, I hope this content was useful for you. So this is my setup again. So uh, all of the options, all of the tools that I use, you can replace them if you don't like them for some reason. But mind that this setup is tried and true. It has worked for a very long time. And since I started with YouTube, I've been slowly improving it. So most importantly, the little tweaks you see on KDN Live, I think that's the most important part of this video, to be honest, because it's not easy to start editing with KDN Live if you don't know these little tricks. But what do you guys think? Do you have a workflow for content creation on Linux you want to share? Or maybe you tried one of these tools and you didn't like it? Let me know in the comments. So guys, this is gonna wrap it up for this video. Thank you very much for watching, I really do appreciate it. If you like this video, please make sure to press the thumbs up button down there and also remember to subscribe to my channel if you want more of this. 
Also make sure to check out the TechPills website at techpills.technology as well as the awesome TechPills community at techpills.technology slash community. Again, guys, thanks for watching and I'll be seeing you in the next one.